Hi guys, Rhonda without an H here with you today. Okay, my friends, I have been holding off doing this because I don't know why. I just have. But for those of you that are unfamiliar with what this is, this is piano roll tape. You know, the old player piano. This is what used to go in the old player pianos. And it would automatically play songs. And I had... Um, my daughter-in-law picked some up for me when they were on vacation and brought them back. And I just... Oh, it's wonderful. But... It's tricky because these little slits in the paper, which makes it uh, or allows it to play, um, they're hard to journal with in their current form. And so I have been playing around with how to make that possible. And so... Today I want to show you what I am doing. I'm not saying this is the only method or the best method or anything like that, but it gives you some options. So basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting my rolls in lengths that I am then applying another paper this is tracing paper, which is very thin. And it comes in all different sizes. So what I plan on doing, and I have already measured this, and actually this particular size, it's not quite the same length my my player <laughs> my piano paper is just a little bit wider than my tracing paper but that's fine because the edges don't have the same you know these slits the player part and so it doesn't need to be lined like this body does. So these are 14 inches in length and 11 and about a quarter on the piano player. <laughs> That's going to be a tongue twister, isn't it? The piano paper. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is glue these two, put these two papers together. Now, at first I thought, well, I'll just, you know, I sew, so I'll just sew it all. But then, you know, you have all these and it would be open. If I just do it around the edges, this would all be loose and it wouldn't be terribly helpful. So what I came up with was using a spray glue. And that seems to do the trick. So... I'm going to, well, I'm just going to tell you and then I'll kind of, my video camera is not where I spray, so I can't show you that, but basically what you want to do, and just, I just buy a cheap spray glue in the, where wherever I can. Sometimes you can find it in the craft section, you can find it in a, um, most any craft store and I just will pick up a can here and there so what you do is just a, just an even coverage you don't get too close because then it'll be globby but I just like you would be spraying on paint anything like that you just spray a nice little layer but not heavy heavy but uh, just a, a good coverage. And then, and then I go ahead and glue the two together. And 
Um, and I will... Doo -doo -doo. This is kind of... This is... I wasn't planning on videoing today. And then I've been working with this and it's like... <gasps> I've been doing this for a long time and I haven't shared with my friends what I'm doing. So, I'm going to be right back. I have to get a couple of things and I will... Uh, show you the rest. Okay, this is what I'm using right now. Um, Loctite spray adhesive, multi-purpose, repositionable, and it dries permanent. Um, so, I'm sure there are different kinds out there. So, what I want to do, see all this <laughs> yummy, these words? It's kind of cool there, so I want that to be on the outside. And I'm going to, and it is a little fiddly. I'm not going to lie about that. It's, it's a little tricky because the paper is so... <laughs> oh! Now, what I have done, I don't know if you can see, but I have sprayed lightly on my tracing paper and now I'm just going to line it up and smooth it out so we shall see if I'm any good at doing this on camera oops that's not but it does say it's repositionable so makes it a little tough where it is Kind of fiddly. <laughs> oh, fiddly, fiddly. Okay, that's not perfect, but I'm doing it on camera and, you know, so I will trim those bits off. And I don't know if you can even see them, but. Now what I want to do is just really secure that down really well. Okay. Okay. Now I will go ahead and I will trim these little bits that I shared with you were not and when I'm not on camera I take more time to take care of it but you can see there was just a little bit off and there's a little bit off here but it's not going to affect my plane with it so now you have this wonderful 14 by what did I say 11 and a quarter inch piece of paper to work with to do whatever you do you know to do your creating to do your amazing your amazing stuff with let me show you what I have been working on a little bit uh, I love coffee dyeing um, and so I have dyed some of these strips. Look at this. Is this just luscious? Look! Oh! This would be fun. Totally able to work with that now. Look at this. Totally able to work with that now. So what I did... And, of course, that part is up to you, whatever you want to do. If you don't want to tea dye or coffee dye or any other type of a dye, that's perfectly fine, too. It looks great just with the color. But I wanted to make sure when I cut for my envelopes, this is what I'm making as envelopes, that I kept it so that this would read right side up. I mean, it doesn't make a big deal but that was just something I wanted to do and I just kind of divided this into thirds and then cut it use my straight edge and what I did with a couple of them and I will show you we'll work on one of these 
which one do we work on? Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I just split this in half, so this will be, you know, a, a shorter envelope. Let me show you what I've been doing. So, this was when I was first starting to do this process, and I hadn't quite discovered the the tracing paper. If you watch my last video on how I came across those books, those little journals that I posted in my Etsy store, you'll notice that I evolve. So in the beginning, I cut it crosswise, and it's fine. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's still cute. That's how I did these envelopes. But, you know, anyway, so because I had cut all of these, so I changed, like this one was, I think this was my first envelope, and I did straight on my edges and just stitched. I stitched the edges before I uh, put it together, and then when I folded it up to create an envelope, then I did the sides on that. And this is still with that other paper. And then the next one, I'm like, well, it looks cuter if you have just a little bit of a, f you know, indent. So then I trimmed my edge, and I thought to make it easier to pull whatever out, it's nice. So I cut a little spot out there. And then this is one that I thought, well, I'll try it with a different, you know, I'll line it. So it's kind of cool. And I do like it, but you can hardly tell. Can you see that that's piano paper? It's just, it's okay. These are okay, but not fabulous. So then, and then, look at the difference with coffee dyeing, you guys. And this does have the tracing paper. Now it's still, the writing is going the wrong way, but it's still very cool. I mean, I like this, actually. That looks really cool. And so, and listen to the crinkle. <laughs> crinkle, crinkle, little star. Okay, oh, oh, twinkle. All right, fine. But look. Isn't this great? This way this all shows up. So I'm really kind of loving this now. And I wanted to show you somewhere in this mess. And I do mean, <laughs> I do mean mess. I have another envelope with something that I've added. Oh, goodness. Where did I put it? Well, okay. Ah. Oh. Ah, ah. So I am working right now on a kitchen journal and I am putting some papers in here. So I'll just show you this one. I mean, I look at this guys. And here's a little image. Open it up. And nothing fancy, just some fun little paper clip. Embellished paper clip with my kitchen images. Writing, this doodling spot. Put it in the envelope. These are great. Whoops. <laughs> they are great. And actually, they fit in so easily, but love the crunch. Love the crunch. But with or without, you know, regardless of whether you do that. So let me show you just real basic. This one I'm going to basically just cut in half. And to do that, I'm just going to kind of fold it to give me a line to cut with. And then I will grab my quilting ruler, my large quilting ruler. I know. I know there's a bunch of you that are just laughing at my tools. And that's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Each to our own, right? 
but you can't argue with how fun that is and how easy that is to take care of. So next I will decide how big I want my envelope to be. I'll just smooth that down again from the crease that I made. Round, a don't stay, sell our care the... I have no idea what that means. Um, so, how big do I want my envelope? So I just start looking at it. I've got a lot of space to work with because this is 14 inches. So that's one thing. If you do it crosswise and it's the 11 inches, then, you know, you still have space, but you're limited as to how big you can make your envelope. So I could make this really large, or I could make this, you know, pretty small, and maybe even get another smaller envelope on that. I don't know. But, now, I don't think I want this. Well, but then if I do it this way... We gotta do it this way, don't we? They, that's that's just me. Okay, so we're gonna fold right there. Gonna put a crease in. Make sure, try to fold it as neatly as possible. And then I decide. So to do this part, I'm just going to turn it over and go up just a just a titch. Not too much, but just a little bit. Maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Maybe not even, actually not even that much normally. But this will be fine. For now, I'll just leave that. And then that will create the line. So now this will be the top. And how far do I want my flap to come down? And I'm thinking about like this. So I'm going to just fold that back. Okay. Then we will cut that. Cut it, rip it, whatever you, however you do. So this is extra. This could be a booklet, a cover for a booklet, a page for a booklet, something of that nature. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Put in some little pages and um, there again, when you leave it the white, the lines don't show up like they do with the tea or coffee dyed or other dyeing as well, I'm sure. Okay, so here we go. Now, I think I don't want those to be straight. I want the flaps to turn in just a touch. So I'm going to just take them both. I'm going to put them together like this. You can do it however you are familiar with it, but I am just going to trim a little bit off. And then it's the same. But I don't want to fold in the middle. I don't want a fold line here, so be careful about that. So that looks good. That looks good. And so now we want to cut out. So I need to find. Okay, here is my inch and a half punch. And it kind of sticks sometimes, so I'm not sure if this is going to stick or bunch up. We'll give it a try. Whoop. <laughs> Whoops. All right. I'm trying to put it in between. Yeah. It's... I know people say, well, do a bunch of... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Reynolds Wrap tinfoil and punch it. But I've never found that works really well. I have found what works better for me is to put another piece of paper, a crisp piece of paper, and fold it and then punch. And that does help. 
but I can see my outline and I'm just going to give it a little there you go then I will stitch here and I will actually I don't need to stitch there right now but I will stitch this before obviously I don't want to stitch it with because <laughs> then it's not an envelope um, and then I want to stitch my sides I think I will go ahead and stitch this across the top and across the bottom and then I will stitch the sides and I will be back okay so I stitched across the top and I've trimmed the edges the threads I stitched across this and then I folded it up and stitched up and through my threads here trimming this and you have a delicious fun piano paper envelope and I just actually as I just was sitting here doing this I had the thought and I am going to um, create a digital image of some of my piano paper because there are probably a lot of you that don't have access to something like that but that you can still get this amazing look and create so I've got I've got to think about how best to do that anyway thanks guys I appreciate you watching if you're new please like subscribe um, look through my older videos there's lots of fun ideas and tips whatnot um, I really am trying to focus and put things um, in my Etsy store. There's, you know, I haven't really been good about that. I have a hard time organizing myself sometimes. And it's a lot for me just to do a video. But I am trying to do that and be better about that. And to share with you what I'm doing and supplies and things so that you can make your own amazing things if that's the way you like to go. So until next time, have a fabulous day. Bye now.